Toad's Recall. Ooh, <laughs> welcome to Toad's Recall, the podcast where we talk about a movie we don't remember very well. We watch that movie. We eat two pizzas and a single salad. Oh, for Pete's sake. Due to budget constraints <laughs> and <laughs> our continuing sponsorship drought. Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're still at two pizzas. We're still at two pizzas. When we get down to one pizza, <laughs> you guys... We are in trouble. Yeah. Second half, we're going to be hangry. Yeah. Oh. So hangry. So hangry. Uh, then, we, then we come back. After we've a, eaten not quite enough salad and <laughs> talk about what we've learned about the movie ourselves... Uh, society, maybe society, gender roles sure. in the eighties or nineties. Generally, yeah. wow. Uh, my name is Dan. I'm Molly. I'm also Dan. I'm Beth. And our movie this oh, a Happy Valentine's I'm Day. Happy oh, oh, Valentine's Day. All the Valentine's be here and eat some chocolate and roses. Wine. There's Hallmark oh, cards and they yeah, are corporate people. oligarch that has completely taken over holidays and for their own benefit. And a baby. And, and, and a and chocolate box with Snoopy on it. Yeah. Our movie is The Lion King. Oh! Continuing our tradition of watching the most romantic movies there are, Disney films. From the 90s. <laughs> uh, is this from the 90s? Uh, ooh, what do you guys think? Yes. I spoiled I the year when trying that. to figure out how we could watch it because oh. of the goddamn Disney vault. What, is, what does that mean? Uh, I mean, I know I've heard of the vault, but... There's the, a vault. Disney, a Disney constricts app. what movies are available. Like right. most movies, hey, I want to watch it. Yeah, go for it. You yeah. can buy or rent any movie anytime. Yeah. But not Disney movies because yeah. they put them in the vault. Right. And so they create artificial... Demand by restricting supply. Right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does this lead to you learning the year? Because I was trying to figure out how we could watch it, and by searching it, it comes up with the year oh. next to it. Because yeah. normally we use a streaming service that, if they want to pay us, we'll say it out loud. Sure. Yeah. They also have a disc service. Yeah. But because it's in the vault, they didn't have the disc uh, because they haven't been able to purchase said mm-hmm. disc. Wow. Well, I feel like this must have been somewhere in the mid-90s-ish, yeah, maybe. For sure. You want to put a year on that? I'm going to say 96. I'm going to say 95, to mm. be contrarian. Okay. I also think it's 95, but I'll say 94 just to, like, spread out. To box Spice it up. up. Yeah. Good job. I, I definitely watched this movie in junior high school. And I saw it four times in the theaters. Wow. What? And, Whoa. and not, I enjoyed it, but it, I didn't go keep seeing it because I was like, I need to get me some more Lion King. Yeah. <laughs> I just kept having opportunities where like a different group of people was going to see the Lion King and invited me. It sounds and, like a nightmare. So I went along. Because you were so popular and you didn't want to lose that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had, this was junior high, so I had my three friends that I had in junior high school. <laughs> uh, who were they? Nicole, Sarah, and Matt. Uh-huh. Uh, Matt and Nicole ended up dating. Oh. And I had a crush on Nicole. Oh. Oh, no. And then eventually they broke up and Matt became my only friend. Poor Sarah. And he's wow. the one who offered to smoke cigarettes with me oh. on the first day of high school and then I had no friends and went and ate lunch with my brother. Oh. Uh, wait, wait, what happened? He smoked he cigarettes, offered you cigarettes and you were like, now we can't be friends? Yeah. Yes. That's so what? cute. No. That's amazing. Yeah. No. The, the anti-smoking imp. Campaign ads in California worked very well, and I was like, "We're done with each other." I, yes, I we had, were like, "I only breathe the salty sea air." <laughs> yes, I had a uh, a we'll call him a boyfriend in yeah. sixth grade, yeah. and he asked me if I smoked marijuana. Whoa! And I was like, "No, we're not boyfriend and girlfriend anymore." Yeah. And you unclasped your t- teen hand from his teen hand. Not even teen hand. Oh. Sixth grade. Sixth grade. Yeah. Any physical oh, contact? I don't know. Uh, I think they held hands once. Yeah, yeah. At recess, and then he was like, "You want to put a dube in this hand?" And you're like, <laughs> "Get out of here!" No, he said it was because I laugh so much, and I was like, "I'm a comedian." Wait, wow! Oh, he thought really? you were high. 
Because you yeah. were laughing so much? Well, I don't think he actually thought I was high. He thought I was like sixth grade high. Uh, <laughs> wait, was he for real offering you marijuana? Well, or here's he the thing. A... He was in and out of juvie a lot. Oh, okay. oh, so probably. Yeah, oh, wrong boy. side of the tracks. I know, right? What was his name? I'm not going to say his name. <laughs> oh. I did see him he at Cub with a small right child recently. Oh. So I was like... <laughs> You had a baby. Touched a bullet on that one. Yeah. You <laughs> might kidding. have Was a the child. baby smoking marijuana? Yeah. Mm. Had a little it's joint. Babies be smoking. And it's a little baby Little face. baby joint. <laughs> baby joint. Man. So, I don't understand how you went four times if you lost all your friends. Yeah. Well, I think I was, I was like, scrambling. Oh, okay. Maybe one of them was with family. So, like, random kids were like, hey, man, we're going to go see The Lion King. Yeah. Do you also want to come? And you were like, this is my chance. Yeah. Maybe okay. I'll have more friends. Yeah. I think that's probably what happened. Maybe my friends went more than once and I just went along because I sure. am a follower. What's a follower? Kind of still am. Oh. I have a question. I'm sorry to dig so far into this, <laughs> no. but it's fascinating. Yeah. Okay. So this is post your two friends being a couple. Like Ooh. they weren't a couple during the watching of The Lion King and you were sitting there seething Great as they sat next to each other. Ooh, I don't remember. Okay. Then they probably were. They probably were. <laughs> I probably left wow. it out. Because that seems like a formative moment. Yeah. If you were sitting in a dark movie theater with two of your teen friends who were together. And I was like... Simba's going to get the lady, even if I don't. Yeah. Oh, that's really sad. I saw this, so I'm a little older than you guys are, and um, I saw this when I was in college, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure, or just after, at prime cynicism time. Yeah, oh. yeah. So I disliked almost everything what? about this movie. Of course you did. Starting with the fact that it has a very sad beginning, where everything seems like it's cool, yes. and then there's like a stampede or some horrifying thing, and then I guess Simba is that the little guy who's mm-hmm. left over, and he's like, "Daddy, left over," and 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 he's alone. It's very sad, and I pretty much turned on the movie at that point because it was, I thought, gratuitously sad. Uh-huh. Um, reminded me of Bambi. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but I persevered. I watched the rest of the film, and what I remember about it is being so mad that they had Elton John songs. Mm. This and, is fascinating yeah. to me. And I was angry because here they finally had a Disney movie set in Africa, yeah. and it has all this wealth of musical tradition yep. and a sense of feeling like you're in a place. Yep. And then they were like, let's get... The whitest, most vanilla, <laughs> boring, <laughs> superstar, <laughs> money in the bank, ka-ching person to record all of the music yeah. for this movie. And um, so literally all I remember is the Simba being hor- horribly sad and abandoned, which I might have to go to the bathroom during that whole scene. <laughs> um, it is then, a very sad scene. It's very sad. And then he meets a lady. Yeah. Much like your friends met each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were like the the Timon and Pumbaa of that situation. Yeah, where you were horrified, like what's going to happen to me when my best friend is going out with this lady? Yeah, or maybe Sarah more, and I were. You're Timon more like Zazu. Which one was Zazu? He's, he's a the, bird. He's Why the is bird. he more like the bird? Because he followed the rules, and that's why he lost his friends. Oh, <laughs> that does sound like me. That does sound <laughs> like me. All of these names sound totally foreign to me. I don't. They're supposed to. Is that African? No, because I don't remember any of this movie. Um, oh, you guys. <laughs> you just keep your judgmental breath to yourself. I find this music thing that you bring up very interesting because all of us were in attendance of your wedding this year. Mm. And mm-hmm. your first dance Spoiler was alert. a Lion King song. That's true. That is absolutely true. Uh, and it was funny because we talked a lot about... And it was this... What, what? Signature Elton John yeah, piece. Yeah, it is the from signature the Elton John piece. Can you uh, feel the love tonight? Yep. So, just to explain, uh, <laughs> we had a band, a local band called School for Girls, come play. Uh, they should probably pay us. Yeah, okay. yeah, but also, like, check them out. They're yeah, awesome. they're great. They're, really but great. I'm just saying, like, yeah, but, uh, anyway, uh, they um, had agreed to do a cover of almost any song, and we couldn't think of a song, but every time. Um, my husband would suggest, can you feel the love tonight? It would make me laugh because yeah. I really hated that song. Yeah. <laughs> and it made us both laugh so hard that we we're finally like, well, let's just do it. 
Awesome. And I have to say, School for Girls did a killer job with that song. It was lovely. Yeah, it's great. And they even did like the talking points, like or talking parts. Yeah, the animals <laughs> the talking like, points. <laughs> they pulled out a PowerPoint yeah. presentation, broke um, down the hierarchy of the jungle or whatever it's did. called. What are they called in this movie? Laws um, of jungle. Like, what is he the king of? What do they call it? The, the pride. The pride. pride. The rock. Pride rock. Sure. Pride. Well, that's uh, but like, the isn't it presented king, as king like, of whatever the sun touches? Yeah, oh, is that how they say it? Yeah, I just couldn't remember if there was like a take a, like just like a singular word of like this is yours, king of something. But it was Cincinnati, just like, the king of the, the of sun touch? vaguely defined space. I think it's what this. Uh, Mufasa that sounds right. Says something about sun touching. Something. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, and the circle of life is in this one, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they hold up another baby at the end. No. Do they? Spoilers. Oh, yeah, they do. That's what I thought. That's this yeah, what I remember from right. the movie. Oh. There's abandonment at the beginning. I don't remember yeah. that. There's a love story, and then they hold up a cub You're at right. the end, a circle of life. So what I'm hearing is that you were so black-hearted at this age <laughs> that the idea that the young cub, who you were so horrified that he lost his family. Yes. You were disgusted that he regained that family at the end of the movie. <laughs> And yes. made a family for his own. Uh, not, that's what I'm hearing. Well, if you put it that way, yeah, no, that's probably true. That's probably fine. For that, I was like, that. I'm. I mean, I'm with you. Like, I feel like I was right at the age where I was starting to fully embrace my cynicism because mm. this was definitely the first Disney movie of like the Disney comeback wave of the '90s, where oh, I was yeah. kind of like, Neh. yeah, oh. thank you. I feel less alone. Because like everybody was, loves the Lion yeah, King. I thought it was fine. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I wasn't like furious like you were <laughs> apparently. But I remember definitely feeling like after the like wonderful adventures of Aladdin and the whatever the other ones, the Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> I remember this one. I was kind of like, mm. hmm. and I think it was also partly the Elton John music too. Yeah, because I lived with my older brother. In that we shared a bedroom, and therefore yeah. I listened to whatever he wanted to listen to, yeah. which meant I was a woefully missed out on the entire movement grunge kid. Yeah. Uh, So I was very much into like angsty, dirty rock music. (laughs) So the idea of sitting through a bunch of Elton John songs Mm -hmm. when I just want to watch my cartoons. (laughs) No, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, There's some big names in this movie, though. Besides Elton John. Yeah. JTT JTT is the voice of so young so Simba? Cute. Oh, is that All yeah. Simbas? Young Simba. Just, young wait, Simba. Just Young Simba. That's Jason Taylor Thomas? Jonathan oh, Taylor Thomas. Oh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Jeez. Okay. You might know Again. him from Home Improvement. <laughs> and, like, every notebook of girls of a certain age. Yeah. He was the it kid for, he was on I don't know, like four years, of probably. cover Disney Adventures magazine. I also so, had Disney Adventures magazine yeah, at some point. Yeah, it's great. I don't know if I was there during the JTT era. Oh, I definitely was. Wait, so who was who played um, Aladdin then? Some guy. That was the I don't I can't remember the actor's name, but he's the boyfriend of DJ Tanner of in, on Full House, oh, okay. Steve. Steve, but I don't it. remember the actor's name. Okay, cool. Uh, this is our second Whoopi movie. Yep. Oh yeah, Whoopi Goldberg is Whoopi Goldberg That's right. Is, She's one of the hyenas. Uh, one of the hyenas. Yeah, and maybe uh, Jaquette's bet. John Leguizamo is another one of those. That hyenas. sounds like that could be real. Yeah. Ooh, uh, there are three of them. Who would the third one be? Yeah. It's definitely another dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's probably John Goodman. That would be hilarious. Sure. That's my it's bet. It's, I made that up. I'm but. gonna be Contrera Dan and say <laughs> <laughs> that it is not Leguizamo. It is Cheech Marin. Oh. 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 That also sounds right. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see. I still have no idea who the other. There are three I, of them. Yeah, Maybe I know. Maybe it's both. Three. Ooh, two Ooh. Latino voices. And then, well, it is. I mean, you know, they already got Elton John, so like, we got to do something. We do something. <laughs> Certainly then, not an Africans, but uh, we have to do something. Yeah. Jeremy Irons, right, yeah. is yes. Scar. Scar. He's the best. And oh. does a great job of being an evil Scar. Yeah. That's the bad guy. guy. Yeah. Okay. He's Simba's uncle. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, so this is basically ripping off Shakespeare. Yes. Yeah, it is Hamlet with animals. Oh, oh. is that true? Yes. Oh, why are we bothering They them? were going to make Hamlet. Disney was going to make Hamlet. Oh, really? And then they were like, what if we made them lions? So this isn't a, they That's didn't true. rip off an African folk story? No. Huh. 
Because they rip off folk tales all the time, sure. right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, rip off. I mean, they, they might have thrown something into the mix. Uh, I don't know. I always imagine this was some famous African folk tale, and then they ripped it off. Wow. But, nope, Shakespeare. All right. I mean, Hamlet. There might be like some element thrown in there of just like, and then the lion was the rock king or whatever. <laughs> right. And then uh, Nala, yeah. right? Yeah. Is that the lady? Is the yeah. lady. I know that because one of my best friends mm. had a cat, or his sister had a cat, and it was named Nala Aww. because she loved this movie because she was, uh, I don't know. A, the a, right a, age. The right age and not destroyed by society <laughs> like Molly and I apparently were. It, either me or my friend Jill had a Nala toy and I don't remember. Like it was like a stuffed animal. Mm-hmm. She was that close to her friends well, that they couldn't tell their toys apart. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Must hey, nice. what happened with Sarah? <laughs> Which one was Sarah? Um, she was the one that was not in the relationship she that wasn't just in dropped the love from the store. Oh, yeah, you like threw <laughs> the name Ray out and then nothing Ray happened. Plus I love Ray. Love. Uh, I, I'm <laughs> sure she did fine. <laughs> I don't know. I, for a while, was mean to her Aww. for no reason, and I feel really bad about it. I think I apologized in high school. Mm. Were you mean because you were so angry that the other two had gotten together? <sighs> Maybe. I don't know. It was just like... Uh, not quite bullying, but like the friend that you pick on. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was her yeah. for me. Yeah, which yeah. was weird because then she was way cooler than me by the time high school. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you honed her like mm-hmm. a sword. Maybe. So yeah. by the time she yeah. high school, she was invincible. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like there are those inexplicable moments, even in relationships, when you're growing up. Like I remember in the second grade, I wrote the meanest letter I possibly could to my best friend. And it was so mean. It was like, I don't like you anymore. I never liked you. You're terrible and stupid. Like, it was terrible. And I mailed it to her and totally forgot about it. Oh, no. And so then the phone rings and I don't pay any attention. And, oh, man, her mother called my mother. And it was bad news. And I felt almost in that moment like, but I'm a dumb kid. Like, I don't, I just didn't totally get why I acted out that way, you know? I think mm-hmm. we just do these weird experiments because we are trying to figure it out. Yeah. She forgave me. It was okay. <laughs> it was good. pretty bad, though. <laughs> anyway, just so you're not... Yeah, I don't... I have no idea why I did that. It was like her... We all... It was such a weird time for me. It was like last day or near the end of sixth grade, uh, she was like, hey, do you want to come over... Uh, and, like, swim in the pool. She had a pool, and she lived down the street that's from That's why you were all friends with her? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's not why, but that. But we started to go to her pool, like, yeah. every day, and then we, we were a little group. Mm-hmm. Um, although I had to... Her house, her neighbor's house, abutted the dead end that I lived on. Mm-hmm. So I had to go through a stranger's yard if I wanted to take the shortcut yeah. to her house. Because yeah. he, he, that person had, like, a gate. And I would just, like, go through and be like, hey, I'm just going. Up <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, and it was always really awkward, but apparently not awkward enough for me to, like, go around and go, like, an extra five, six blocks yeah. to get around. And apparently scene, not that big of a deal for your neighbor. Yeah. Sometimes, like, I would call and Sarah would, like, meet me there. Other times I'd just go through. But, yeah, like, the summer after sixth grade, I was over at her house almost every other other day or whatever, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. hanging at the pool. Um, so that's why we were over there. I don't know where I was going with that. Maybe I wanted to brag about pools. California, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but she's not in this movie. Um, <laughs> do we know who voices Nala, either as a young cub or a older lioness? I don't know who that is. I'm interested to find out. Yeah, because it's probably someone. That we know. Like yeah. Tiffany Thiessen or that's, something. That's the weird thing about these Disney Pretty movies. Is I feel like there's always... That was like the thing where it's like, oh yeah, that person. But then every once in a while it's just like some voiceover artist that mm-hmm. the animators just know. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the, depending on the character, like suddenly it'll be just like, oh wow, this person in that movie? What about that character? And it's yeah. just someone you've never heard I of. It can't always be Cameron Diaz. Right. Like is she in a Disney movie? She's in a lot of Disney. She was in Shrek. Shrek was her big one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But then I also kind of wonder... Why bother? Like, the kids, they don't know. Yeah. Like, no well, eight-year-old knows who Jeremy Irons oh, is. Oh, I can answer this question. Okay. For the parents. 
Yeah, it's actually for the publicity. Yeah. Because you need to do a press tour and you need someone people have heard uh, of. Yeah. So, for example, when Cartoon Network did the Powerpuff Girls movie. Here we go. Story, Another story from the. Co- I'm just <laughs> no, kidding. I'm just kidding. He's fascinated. Is, Ted was... Turner called you into the office. Like, <laughs> Chase, we gotta get. Chase, do you like puffs, right? You are powerful. <laughs> Put on these earmuffs. Anyway, what? Not at all. Who's in the like, Powerpuff movie? This is the scantest little bit of information. No, but I mean, that was a, a thing, is that the animators felt really strongly they wanted the original voices yeah. of all the Powerpuff Girls to voice the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which makes a lot of sense, and of course they did an incredible job. The problem for the PR department, though, is right. they couldn't get anybody in the press to care about someone they couldn't picture, had never seen, and had only heard the character voice and didn't know their names. So, yeah, this is a very um, specific reason that they do that. Is this... Well, is this a change for Disney movies? Like, I feel like the ones before don't have as much star power. Mm -hmm. I guess... Yeah, go. Like during the yeah, '90s Renaissance, they threw yeah. some more recognizable people in yeah. there. But like this their old stuff, more jam packed than yeah. previous ones. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Like, I can't. Robin I can't Williams. name anybody from Beauty and the Beast. Oh, I can. Uh, I had the guy who played Niles on Frasier. He played the candle guy. That was fun. I like that. That's movie. not who I, played the candle guy. Can we watch that movie? That is instead? not who played the candle guy. Well, okay. The candle guy was French. Candle guy was not. Candle guy was uh, fucking Orbach from the Law and Order. <laughs> oh, and Angel Lansbury was yeah. in yep. Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast is a superior movie in every way. Let's just watch we'll it. We'll watch that next Valentine's Day. Oh. That won the Oscar for best something. There Maybe straight up movie. Not even animated. I don't remember. I don't remember. Mm. Uh, yeah, but this one's got a lot of names. Yeah. I think this is where, I think this is what happened is they were like, oh, it's just a bunch of lions. We got to gussy this up juice this up because like with Aladdin they were just like they had Robin Williams they're like this is gonna be great we're gonna be like this is Robin Williams he's great also there's a bunch of colors and crazy shit yeah whereas this one it was like it was just a bunch of animals well wait did anybody voice uh, Ariel Ariel no the Little Mermaid I don't think so I think that was I think that was just like some lady a talented voice actor probably did yeah Hmm. although they took her voice away in the movie so so So, we never know yeah um, what happens in the movie? Yeah, great question. I think I already answered I feel like we pretty much covered it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Simba is the king, and then Scar doesn't like it, so he like... Prince, he's, he's like the crown prince. Yeah, he's not the Pushes king. Mufasa off the cliff, and he gets killed by a bunch of wildebeest. Stampedes, okay. Yeah, uh, he set up a stampede. Yeah. And then Simba's... Why does he leave? Angst, or does he get scared out of town? Uh, I think he gets scared out of town. He Scar tells him that it's his fault that his mm. dad died. Oh, oh, because he sets it up in a way that he's like, Rawr. he goes to the elephant graveyard, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No, he goes Is to the elephant after? graveyard earlier, That and that's where the hyena is. Mufasa is trying to save... Simba. Correct. Yes, that's what it is. But Scar uh, made that happen? Yes. Yeah. Because he threw Simba into the he uses, Wildebeest stampede? He uses his hyena cronies oh. to influence the direction of the herd. Right. Uh, I think, right? I think Isn't so. Isn't that what the hyenas are for? Yeah. They have to serve a purpose in this movie besides just like think, being there, right? I think right? they cause the stampede. Yeah. They're also comic relief. And Nazis. But they're also threatening. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. There's a weird Nazi illusion at one point. Oh, really? Yeah, it's great. Oh, That's yeah, they, like, like high step. They, like, high step across the fucking graveyard or something. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I mean, it's during a song, so it's sort of like, did that really happen? Or is right. it sort of like a weird little musical yeah. thing? And then Simba <laughs> runs away. Goes in a self-imposed exile. Finds Timon and Pumbaa. Correct. Yeah. Who are also in self-imposed exile. Or maybe not self-imposed. I think they're just, like... Maybe legit imposed exile. Yeah, I think they're just kind of, like, the loners of their yeah. animals. Goofballs. So they just are, well, like, Hakuna buddies. Matata. Yeah, isn't that, like, half the Hakuna... Isn't that part of the Hakuna Matata song? It's just, like, nobody liked us, so we left, because no one wanted yeah. us to be around. Yeah, it means no worries. Yeah. For, for the, the rest of your days. days. Right, I got that. Oh, my God. That's our... Problem free. Keep going. Uh, Philosophy. I remember uh, getting so pissed during that song when they transition into old Simba because now I'm just like, ugh, he's just another lion. Boring. Oh, it's like a fade into it. You know what I mean? Like, I like he's the like little cub because the little cub's adorable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. doing all these cute little cub things. Then suddenly it's just like a normal lion. He's like walking I don't on care. a log and then grows up. Yeah, ugh, who cares? There's a baboon earlier. Oh, Rafiki. yeah, yeah, Rafiki, who's got a big stick that he swats people with. with. Like yep. uh, Rafiki means friend. It does? In Swahili. Oh, cool. Because oh. he is the friend of everyone, presumably. And he's got a big tree. Yep. Yeah. He's like the shaman. Correct. Yeah. And he like... He like 
He like uses. I have a distinct memory of him using his thumb to yeah. like draw berry juice on yeah. Simba. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Writing that down. Thumb berry juice. Cool. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, and uh, then they run into Nala. You know, does Nala come back and it's like, hey, uh, shit's gone wrong. I feel like that's you got to oh, get back here. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, I don't care about that. We eat grubs all day. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. Yeah. But do you want to party with me? <laughs> she probably doesn't say that. And then she's like, not really, but then she does? I think she like is like, you used to be cool. And she uses her feminine wiles. And you don't think it's legit? You think it's genuine? You think she like seduced him into coming back? I think she likes him and kind of uh, plays. We'll see. This is, now I'm intrigued by Hard that part get. of the movie. I think she kind of shames slash yeah. flirts him back oh, to sure. it. I'm going to say shame, shame flirt. flirt. Shame flirt. Love it. And they go back. Then oh, go he back. also has... Uh, he also has like a moment of enlightenment where like the ghost of his father is like, "Hey, dummy! Oh yeah, what? live up to your There's legacy, yeah, oh, nice. dude." So Shakespeare, Hamlet, yeah, yep. Simba, my son, James Earl Jones, oh. aka Darth oh, Vader. Oh, is James Earl Jones. Yeah, mm-hmm. <clears throat> all the names, all the names. I think Mr. Bean is the bird. <clears throat> oh, everyone like this yeah, is the one that's like full of names, but now <laughs> they're more names <laughs> now than they maybe were when this movie came sure. out. Mm. But they weren't like voiceover artists, you know, sure. by trade. Who's uh, adult Simba? I have no idea. That I don't know. It might that's be the like, same guy as Aladdin for all. I know. Right? <laughs> He's the main character. Eh. I feel like Simba's the appeal not. was JTT as little cub, but then it wouldn't make sense for a tiny cub to fight his uncle at the end. Because that would be ridiculous, because male lions eat cubs all the time. And JTT can't voice up? Oh, like they tried to direct him to sound like an adult and he couldn't yeah. do it? <laughs> Wasn't he a child? I think so. Yeah. He'd be like, I'm, I'm a lion. Oh, I'm a grown up lion. It's, it's me, grown up lion. It's me, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. <laughs> My dad's good at tools. <laughs> 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 well, now I'm going to be sad that's not in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he uh, comes back, he fights Scar, he wins. Oh, for Pete's sake. Yeah, but there's, the there's a whole bunch of stuff in between there. Bangs Zazu Nala. is in a, <laughs> is in like a cage that's like, and he's like singing, I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Sure. Oh. Oh, Zazu might be in there somewhere. Like, does he go and try to go with Nala? Maybe. I feel like he's more like, I feel like he always sticks around at the rock because he's like the weird advisor of the rock. Like, that's okay. his like job. He's also an advisor? Yeah, sort of. So he's mm. he's always just in this little cage that Scar has him in. I think, I mean, yeah, once Scar takes over, he gets, he becomes a caged creature. And yeah. Scar is ruling with an iron paw. Correct. Yeah. He's a jerk. A Jeremy iron paw. Ooh. Oh. And, I, yeah. okay. <laughs> and, uh, and I think there's even like okay. a, oh, the, like the, the whatever, the sun touch kingdom <laughs> Is falling apart because he's yeah. letting the hyenas run wild and they don't right. like There's respect about, the environment like, or something. Yeah, yeah like he's let the hyenas in here. Yeah. Which is, that's maybe going to be a weird theme of like these second class hyena citizens yeah. that we don't allow because they're like gross. But isn't that kind well, of based on reality? Gross. I think it's because they like eat other animals. Because they're scavengers and yeah. that's an important part of the ecosystem, Disney. But I think I think that is like Whoa. also like <laughs> even isn't that like a thing in like actual nature where lions and hyenas are just like, hey, I hate you, and they constantly. I think so. Deal with like dick around with each other. Yeah, because the lion will like kill the antelope or yeah. whatever, and then the hyenas want to get in there and, and steal like, it. Come in as a pack and be like, yeah. get out of here. We've got weird genitals. Ah. What? Hyenas have weird genitals? Hyenas have weird genitals. <laughs> is that the best? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dan's bet. Hyenas, not the hyenas in this movie, though, that would be fascinating. Mm. Uh, hyenas have weird genitals where they thought, I'm half remembering this, they used to think that maybe they were hermaphroditic because Whoa. the females have, like, very prominent genitalia. Mm. Interesting. Wow. Where it was, like, protruding. Is that why they're laughing all the time? Because they, like, <laughs> look down, they're like, Whoa. what is this? What am I? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes. Uh, I can see it. Mm-hmm. And then it's good. over, right? Pretty and much. Then, yeah. And then it's over, then it's like Nala and Simba are in love, and then I think they have a baby cub, yeah. and that's the end. And, and like, like the heir apparent, and, and the kingdom that. is continuing. Wow. The legacy that was, of I was going to say it's a very specific ending. Like, circle of mm-hmm. life. And then clack, clack, clack out. Best bet. And then it like, yeah, and then it bl- like... It, I think out. it's like a like a quick cut. Yeah. Like a quick cut mm-hmm. to black. Dramatic. Hard to black. Hard <laughs> okay. to black. Yeah. 
Hey, do we think that any named female characters talk to each other? Oh, I think so. Is mm. is in classic Disney? Oh yeah, where's times, mom? Is mom dead already? No, or out of the mom picture? is alive. <gasps> Mom's around. Mom oh. stays alive. Oh, does mom have to be like the weird concubine? To the <laughs> oh parents? God! Oh, that's him. I yeah, I don't, oh, yeah. I don't yeah, think probably. they do really have that, but. It might be that might be something that as a child that I missed. Yeah. I'm writing I down like, mom cubine. I feel like at the very oh, great. I feel like at the very least there is Dan's bed, there is a scene once Scar's in charge where mom is sassing at Scar. Sure. Where she's like, You're an idiot and you're terrible at this and yeah. he's like, Ugh, shut up. Men's rights or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, is is Scar a big MRA? <laughs> Hard to say. Hard to say. Probably. Uh, probably. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to say no on Bechdel Wallace. I feel like Nala. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess there's there's a hyena. Maybe Whoopi sasses. Ooh, yeah. Tiger I, or Lion Mom. I, but is Whoopi? I know that there's a scene where Simba and Nala are getting cleaned by their moms. Mm-hmm. Oh. So they're being laid. So maybe some mom talk. And then I think that's right. I think the moms talk to each other, but I don't know if, like about their kids. I don't mm. know if that's a thing. And then I think Nala's like, Mom, can we go and play? And she's like, oh, okay. And then they go. What's Nala Ooh. mom name? Yeah, is Nala mom Ooh. name? I don't know off the top of my head, but I yeah. feel like she might be named. So, Beth, you remember so much of this movie. How yeah. many times do you think you've seen it? Um, Like, I had it on VHS, so probably a lot. And okay. I saw it in theaters, too. Um, yeah, probably, like, hundreds of times. But not for a very long time. Right. Like, okay. hundreds of times between the age of, like, seven and... Nine. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Prime viewing. Yeah, and then Nine your time. brain got flooded with hormones, and it pushed all that beautiful Disney wonder out yep. of there for a while. <laughs> yep. And then you started going out with Bad Boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we um, name all the songs in this movie? Can you fill it up tonight? Can High five. Circle I want to be a mighty king. Of life. Oh, circle of life. I just can't wait to be king. Yeah, can't wait to be king. Uh, uh, Hakuna sc- Matata. Right. The Scar one. Where he's like, guys, let's do this. Like the evil guy song. Yeah. I'm a Scar. Do you remember what it's called or how it goes? Uh, I'm trying to... Th- Ooh, it's called Be Prepared. Be prepared. Ooh. For the death of the king. Oh. Wow. Is that in parentheses in the mm-hmm. title? Five. Um, Is there a lot? Well, sir, can you feel love tonight? Can you feel love tonight? Is that it? Um... That might be it. Does the coconut song count? No. Uh, it wasn't a movie original. Coconuts. <laughs> Doobity doo. Here they are, standing in a row. Bum, bum, what is that bum, actually from? Big one, small one, some the size of your head. I don't know. And okay. then he throws something at him. Ah, hilarious. Uh, it's a good laugh line. Physical comedy. Mm. You're going to laugh, Molly. <laughs> I'm going to love it. You're going to think about it. I'm so excited. Ah, ah. <laughs> Your yes. wedding and the love you felt that night. Yeah, I'd be like, why did they ruin this song with Elton John? Oh, Ooh. didn't he write it? That is a very college. <laughs> I think he wrote all. It's a very college view of the movie. Yeah, the, that's the, true. The appropriation movie. Uh, yeah. it's not even gonna which, is, oh. which is a legit complaint. Oh, for and, sure. And people have it for but, sure. Yeah. Wait, you said Circle of Life, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I was like, oh, we missed like the major one at the beginning. Right. right yeah. I mean, none of these are as good as. Uh, I can show you the world, but. Oh. Uh, yep. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Okay, so the big question then is how many coconut trees? What? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see this movie. How many child abandonment horrifying <laughs> opening scenes yes. would you give this movie? It's like a fourth scene in the movie. Like okay. it opens with like he's the king, then it gets horrible. Well, that's just even worse. Yeah, so, true. how many horrible abandonment scenes would you give this movie? <laughs> so, is that a good thing? <laughs> I don't know how to rate this now. <laughs> it's a scale of one to five. All right. Uh, I mean, I guess it is compelling story, which mm-hmm. is valuable in film telling, yeah. storytelling. So, I guess it's a good thing. I'm gonna give it. Oh God, I don't know. Like, I do feel like if I was, like, meh as a kid, I might be, like, real college chase on this, watching it as an adult. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to give it a hopeful three. Hopeful three. I I think I'm going to enjoy it. I used to really like this movie. I think it's going to be a good wave of nostalgia, and I like the music. So I'm going to give it a four. Ooh. 
Great. Or abandoned coconut trees. <laughs> uh, I also think I'm going to like this movie. Um, I saw it four times in theaters. Oh, the end of that story. Not the end, but the fun fact is I remember kind of feeling braggy about that. <laughs> like that I had seen a movie four times. It was like yeah. a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember if I like told anybody, but I remember internally... <laughs> Similarly to the time that I bragged about how long of a book I could read in like <laughs> third grade, I don't know if I ever told the story, but the teacher was laying out like rules about the free reading you could do. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I raised my hand and asked, like, "What if it's like two hundred pages long? Is that okay?" <laughs> oh, I was like, "I'm a third grader or whatever." It was a book about dragons. Do you think this contributed to your loss of friends? Over yeah, maybe. <laughs> Like a dragon kid over here. Uh, so I'm going to give it a four because I think it's a fun story yeah. with good laughs. Would you call it a romp? A, a fun romp. <laughs> it's probably going to have something for everybody. Yeah. It's going to be great. Molly? I'm giving it a grumpy too. Yeah. Yeah, grumpy. Love it. I mean, maybe it'll... I mean, it can really only go up from there, right? Let's hope so. I mean, there's... There's down. There's I an easy there's... way to go down by one. Yeah, it could be the Freaky Friday of Disney films. Oh, or Disney man. animated films. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Freaky Friday is the yeah. Freaky Friday of Disney <laughs> You know what I mean. Oh, if I could get that time in my life back. That was the worst experience I think I've ever had watching a movie. But anyway, that's not this experience. We'll see. We'll see. And with that, we're going to press pause. We're going to go eat some pizza and salad. Yay. Uh, and we'll be right back. Um, um, uh, uh, and we're back. We've just watched one hour and 28 minutes of puns and butts <laughs> in The Lion King. <laughs> you're not, All right. You're not wrong. Second half done. Yeah, you're right. not wrong, I mean, but I feel like you're trivially, <laughs> trivializing the young lion struggle. Oh, to find himself. So much struggle. And mm-hmm. to... Assert his family's dominance, dominance over nature over or the something. Pride over the other part of his family. Yeah. Oh, right. I guess it was sort of like a War of the Roses kind of thing. Wasn't that the same family? Or were those like two different families? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't History either. was not my class. I don't know. Class. Sorry, the uh, War of the Roses. <laughs> I don't either. I is that the... That was a civil... That was like that the a Chinese rebellion. One? No, that's the one that Game of Thrones is based off of. Oh, what am I So maybe those are... War of the Five Kingdoms? Wait, wait, that is Game of Thrones. Isn't, no, isn't, isn't War of the Five <laughs> Kingdoms? Uh, Seven Kingdoms? Seven Kingdoms in What's Game of Thrones. What's the Chinese period of warring? Oh, right, where like that one dude managed to unify everything. Like Lubu is in there. and <sighs> Dude, I don't know. The Dynasty Warriors video. Everybody. Tweet at us. Yes. Hashtag, what would that? Dynasty. Yep. Mm-hmm. There you go. Hey, so, Lions, huh? Lion King. Lion King. Came out in 1994. Oh, that's man. Yes. Yes. Good job. Ooh, Good job. Glad Good job. that you guessed 95 or else I wouldn't have gotten that. Yeah. <laughs> Teamwork. Which also yeah. means I was in the middle of college, so extra jaded. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. is the most jaded time. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And Beth, how old were you when it came out? It came out in 94. I was mm. five years old. Nice. Yeah, so very different impressions of this movie. <laughs> so I forget, did you see it in the theater? I did see it in the theater. I believe I saw it in the theater. I think this is the one, This is the movie that I went to with my aunt and uncle and, and cousins. And then afterwards. And afterwards you just kicked your uncle well, in the shin. You're terrified <laughs> no, of uncles. And then, <laughs> and, then my, and then we were like at some family gathering the next day or something. And my uncle was like... Hey, have you seen The Lion King? And I was like, Yeah, I saw it with you. And they thought that was really funny because he was like trying to make conversation with a five year old. And I was like, Yeah, you're being an idiot. Of course I saw it. <laughs> we saw it together. It's a garbage opener. Yeah. Because yeah. it's got some scary moments, I feel like, for a five year old. Well, yeah. Well, for a full grown woman, whatever. Well, I... you were just scared of your emotions. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, don't, true. I mean, that was more. I mean, that part was. Scary. I guess that part is scary in like a philosophical sense, in that like you're staring at death right in the face. It's emotionally wrenching. It is. Mm -hmm. Rough. Mufasa dies. Spoiler alert. Yeah. I remember that being scary, but like I don't remember like crying or anything. Like that kind of scared. I mean, I don't remember crying for like 20 years, but that's not related. (laughs) There's Um, your divorce talk. (laughs) No. I got, I got through it. I didn't yeah. get through Labyrinth. 
Ooh. Sure. Had to stop that That's movie. That's probably scarier. It took me 18 years to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, which part of Labyrinth? Um, the part where David Bowie steals the baby. Oh, like right at, yeah. right at the top. Because yeah. we, we started yeah. watching it, and it was right after my brother was born. Yeah. And so I was like, oh my god. There's a baby. David Bowie's going to come <laughs> and steal my brother. <laughs> and you were not well gel of that baby. You mm-hmm. appreciated him. Um, I was well gel of that baby. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but not so much that you wanted a Goblin King to come steal him away? No, but I... Yeah. So, like, you didn't even get far enough into the movie to be like, oh, there's an adorable fox knight. No. And a not giant at all. Ludo. No. Oh, man. Well, I don't remember either of those things. Oh, well. We didn't watch that movie, though. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of the movie Pan. <laughs> like, Pan's Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth. Oh, you, yeah, I, I thought so you meant confused. Pan, but, like, this like eight month King? old movie starring Hugh Jackman in an insane costume that looked god awful. <laughs> oh, I don't even know. I don't even heard of that movie. What's happening? It didn't do well. Uh, Anyway, I was picturing Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah. Now I understand you're talking about a different movie. You got it. Yeah, like the the part where David Bowie fought in this Spanish, uh, whichever Civil War. Civil War. Eyes on his hands. Yeah. Yeah. That was David Bowie. Oh, I did not. And he juggled him around. Yeah. Oh, right. With the really, it was Mike Motion. What? Oh, yeah, that guy. Anyway, there was a stampede, and Simba was sad. It was so I mean, we were sad. all sad, I think. We were all sad. Yeah, crazy. that's really sad. When he, like, goes under the, his dad's Ooh, that paw. was rough. That's, that's so sad. Part. Yeah, that was they awful. laid it on sick. Like, yeah. I did not remember it being, like, that uh, like that long and drawn out of a I moment. Did. And, well, of course you did. Yeah. Everything is very, like, on the nose oh, yeah, in this movie. It really is. It's not, there's no subtlety, really. No. Mm-hmm. No. No. There was one scene... Where I said, this is a bad scene out loud. Uh, (laughs) And I liked it, for the most part. I liked it a lot. Uh, But there's one scene where, like, he is deciding that he has to go back. And, like, he literally is saying, like, the thought process that would have to happen. It's super obvious. It was It's already been laid out. It was real good. Well, if I go back, I guess I'll have to face my past. That was the best line in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're just talking about. We just it's we, what the monkeys been talking about for like ten minutes. We had, you, know, you already had a thin metaphor about it. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to literally say it now. We all get it. Yeah, I I can't tell if like I'm like oh well it's a kids movie right. so maybe kids need it spelled out for them mm-hmm. but then I'm like do they need it spelled out for them? No, they just skim over those parts. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, didn't I don't care. Yeah, I don't think you like need a reason. You're like, like oh yeah no get the, back go back. Yeah. yeah, I want more butt jokes. <laughs> I feel like when I was a kid it was like. He saw his ghost dad, and then there was inspiring music and him running. I'm like, yeah, I get it. So yeah, I don't know yeah. why that. I, I guess I thought like his dad told him to go back. Yeah. Essentially, I don't think yeah. we needed that line of like, oh, then I'll have to do this thing that I'm afraid of. Oh. And they saved all that time by not writing any dialogue for two women characters to talk to That's each other true. at all. Yeah, I thought it was going to happen. Yeah, not not even. Not really close. I guess maybe if Nala's mom had been named. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Then the it would have been like. Maybe. Maybe. Because they were talking about Nala and Simba. Right. So, but I feel like in that case, it's like not, I mean, they are talking about the male character, Mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily like talking about a man like, ooh, I think he's so cute. Yeah. That kind of thing. But she wasn't named. Let me present this. It didn't pass. Theory. Go for it. What if, as I said, people used to think hyenas were hermaphroditic? Mm. Let's Mm -hmm. say that is the operating thought for these hyenas, does that count? Well... They don't really talk to each other very much. A little. I guess they talk about Mufasa most of the time, though, so mm-hmm. that doesn't count either. I mean, if we're going to split hairs that much, I think the Bechtel Walls is about two female characters talking to each other That's and true. not two non-males. That's true. Mm. That's a good point. It's a very uh, good point. Which is... Maybe it should be. I don't know. Uh-huh. But in that case, it still wouldn't matter if right. the hyenas right. are yeah. gender yeah. fluid. Which, again, they are not. That was just people <laughs> being dumb before they understood anatomy well enough to, yeah. like, think about it. Uh, Beth nailed it on the opening. Oh, man. That's true. And the closing. Yeah, yeah I didn't know it happened twice. No. Well, you okay. kind of said it did. The The baby comes there, back Yeah, around. there is a circle of but life. the editing is the same as well. Yeah. yeah. The hard black. There is a, yeah. Uh, or hard, hard title card. Hard Hard card. Hard card. <laughs> hard card. <laughs> hard card. It's that Steven Seagal movie. Yeah. <laughs> Very dramatic. It was. It was well done. Yeah. And then also good on the king of 
everything the I think he said light, light touches, touches instead yes. of sun. Mm-hmm. And then well, it's, but they're lions. They don't understand what a sun is. Like they don't understand that. Like yeah, yeah. It's all, a, everything surrounds around the sun. It's like, canon it's that only system. Pumbaa understands what stars are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is a pretty good joke. It is. I find that I found that joke pretty charming. Yeah. Right? Where they're guessing what stars are, and Pumbaa says they're giant balls of gas, which they are. Yeah. But that it's a fart joke yeah. also. Good job, writers. It's yeah. a pretty good science Killing fart it. joke. I remember enjoying that yeah. as a child. Yeah. On my way to cynicism, I was like, yes, science, also farts. I am in my wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah. That's the right the sweet spot. Nope. <laughs> as you're growing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, JTT is in this. We Indeed. nailed it. And then he becomes Matthew Broderick. Right. Ooh, we whoa. Ever. You guys, that was such a surprise. That was yeah. weird. I did not realize it was Broderick. And then I couldn't, I mean, obviously I couldn't unhear it. Yeah. But like, it's, I guess for me it was weird because I always just thought it was some boring adult man voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, but I'm also like, I have a pretty good ear for like recognizing voices. So as soon as I knew it was Matthew Broderick, I'm like, oh my God, it's Matthew Broderick yeah. talking out of that boring lion. And then you can't like stop. Picturing Matthew Broderick in a vo- in a voice, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Doing yeah. The- I just I kept thinking of um, his because he did so much voiceover in Biloxi Blues. I don't know what that is. Um, it's it's a play that became a movie, and it it's real depressing. Okay, but anyway, is that why you didn't like this movie so much? Because it reminded you of Biloxi Blues? No, <laughs> no, no. And I um, no. <laughs> I didn't like this movie very much. Oh, no. I feel like a failure, though, because so Why? much work went into this movie. Well, I have to say, all the animation was spectacular. I yeah, mean, you could take any screen frame from the entire film and just be blown away by how gorgeous it was. Yeah. The, um, uh, my, what's the one gonna be king? You just can't, can't wait, wait to, to be king? Yeah. When it, like, cuts to, like, Technicolor, or whatever weird. it is. Yeah, yeah. That weirded me out. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of jarring, but every all those shots I think are so pretty. Yeah, like, it's very bright and colorful. And it's fun. a very uh, Prince Ali. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. with all the animals. Yeah, doing oh, yeah. choreography, and that stuff. song is sort of what like opened the floodgates of butts. <laughs> like that song, like half of that song was Zazu the bird getting like crushed or pushed by butts. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of butts in this movie. A lot yeah. of butt jokes. The yeah. hyenas get buh, like pricklies in their butts. Yep. Zazu gets a lot of animal butts on him. Nala gets her butt licked in like a un, like kind of a compromising position while she's trying to have a serious conversation with her best friend. Uh-huh. You know? Because she's being groomed, yeah. not some weird yeah, should, <laughs> sex thing. <yeah. laughs> should point that out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for what other butts are there? A lot of Pumbaa butt jokes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Butt puns. Gas puns. Yeah. yeah. I just feel like there's a lot of just like prominent butt shots. Like, and I understand it's just because like anytime an animal isn't facing the camera... You're gonna look at the animal's butt. But I the, know. I feel like they had like a per page butt quota they had to meet. <laughs> yeah. Like so many jokes per page and yeah. so many butts. And I would agree the animal rumps mm-hmm. seemed especially full. <laughs> <laughs> like a zebras is like zebras and hippos. Yeah. It's just like, are those butts really that big? Yeah. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. Hippos are probably Does this film make my butt look big? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. But then I was also I was also bothered. Uh, and of course they did this way. When I was bothered as a cat owner, <laughs> every time we saw the back of a cat, you didn't just see the cat's asshole. Yeah. Well. Because that's the reality of cats. Okay, but, but they're not, not going to put that in gonna, a kid's yeah. movie. Yeah, you're not going to animate a baby lion's butthole, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's but I mean, great. It great. took me out of it. It took sure. me out of the movie. Isn't it? The lack <laughs> of just, anus. It shouldn't have just The lack of so anus. Far. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Took, took you out of it. Yeah. All right, fair enough. So. That's how that went for me. Um, <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg. In it. Johnny Leguizamo. No. Not in it. Cheech Marin. Yes. yes. Sorry. Latinos. I keep uh, used. My John other. Goodman was a Hail Mary yeah. that led to nowhere. I mean, that would have been a very different characterization if the third hyena was John Goodman. That's very true. And you know what, though? Uh, he is just, in my mind, just a stone's throw from Nathan Lane, who is in this film. Who is? Uh, John, Goodman? John Goodman. How so? Well, when I was in high school, I went to go see Guys and Dolls yeah. on Broadway, yeah. which was extremely important in my development as a human and arts lover, because I thought I hated musicals uh-huh. up until that moment, probably because of Disney movies, um, and because I just never seen like a, I just never seen a, a musical. Like a full production. Like a full production, yeah. you know? 
And so I was in New York, and we got to see Guys and Dolls, and it absolutely blew me away. Mm -hmm. And I thought Nathan Lane was terrific. He was in the role, and it was awesome. But as we were waiting to go in, we saw John Goodman oh. in a tuxedo oh. there to see theater. Oh. Wow. So these two are forever connected in my mind. Was Nathan yeah. Lane the, the goofy one or the handsome one? He was the main guy. Okay. Is that the goofy or the With all the good one? songs. The I don't know. Because there's Rock and the Boat guy, who's more of the like, ah, oh, I'm, the, I'm the goofy guy. I'm more the cliche of the guys. No, no, I think Nathan Lane was the, the main, main guy. Sinatra. Pretty sure. Well, that uh, seems possible. I haven't seen that since Either my way. seventh grade. I'll buy it. He's very talented. <laughs> Tweet at us. Here's oh, yeah. Up. Hashtag. Who that lane? Who that lane? <laughs> Which lane was he in? Uh, ah! Lane chain. Okay. Lane chain. Yeah. yeah, please also make a lane pun. <laughs> That's please. a lane. HOV lane. Yep. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. What were we talking about? <laughs> I was going to say bowling alley. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> bowling alley. A lot of bowling jokes in this. Oh, yeah. Well, just a couple. Pumbaa. There are more than one bowling joke. Well, he, he bowls for buzzards when we first see Timon and Pumbaa, and then he calls back when he bowls yeah. the hyenas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they were like bowled skill over. Set. Can I say, speaking of excellent animation, mm -hmm. I found the. Just general, uh, I would give full props to the Pumba team because mm. I feel like anytime he did anything, it was like at least mildly comical. Like, just like the way they animated, the way his like just oddly shaped body moved, I mm -hmm. found yeah. very entertaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so even when he was running hair. for his life. Yeah. Very yeah. funny. Delightful. I'm not surprised there's oh. like seven spin off Timon and Pumbaa movies. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was looking at the IMDb credits for the guy who plays Pumbaa, and yeah. it's like all Pumbaa. It's like 12 Pumbaa roles. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right. Well, you can't all be the leading guys and dolls. Yeah, <laughs> milk it. Uh, and then Jeremy Irons is Scar. Yeah. Mm. Who that was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's he a great bad guy. He is. He's no Ursula. No. no. But who is? No right? Ursula. No one is. And it would be weird if he also did, like, kind of a like, <laughs> weird like a, burlesque like drag queen. Yeah. Evil I mean, I'd go, I'd, I'd, I'd see it. I, I think want. he could pull it off. I think he could pull it off. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it would be kind of retreading the same territory for Disney. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Scar was a real bad guy. He was. Oh. Yeah. So conniving. So mm -hmm. conniving. And he just straight up murders Mufasa. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that... Like, and I feel like even for Disney movies, usually the villain is not, like, their thing isn't like, I'm just going to straight up murder people. Mm -hmm. Usually they've got some scheme that's more elaborate. Like turning puppies into a like, coat. Yeah, it's still mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, even that, it's like, well, she's not, it's not like her plan is like, I'm going to go over there and murder all these puppies myself with my bare hands. You know I what mean, I mean? Kind of. But even like... But she doesn't say, I'm going to murder these I mean. like, puppies it's not, and skin them. And it's then like, I am going to make it a coat. Make it sew it into a coat. Yeah, whereas, like, Scar, it's like, his entire thing is just like, I'm going to kill this guy and his child. And he says it, like, 40 times in the movie. And they yell that after it. Simba is, like, running away and... They're like, we're gonna kill you yeah. to yeah. Like a little baby. It's very why violent. are we? Why did we watch this movie? It's a classic I enjoyed from it. the vault. Oh. Yes, yeah, from the vault. <laughs> okay. And it's Valentine's Day. Yes, yeah. yeah. this was one was so very romantic. romantic. So romantic. Oh. Let's talk about the love story. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's why you got the heart shaped box of chocolates really? for the treat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. We um, this is a secret we've never revealed, but usually we have a treat after yeah. we eat our pizza. Oh, we never talk about that, but we've we never talked about We've never done treat. hashtag treat talk. <laughs> <laughs> if you donate one hundred and fifty dollars, wow. all right, yeah, yeah, we will tell you the themed treat for yeah. your episode of choice. Yep. Uh, there was some thumbberry juice. Mm -hmm. There was lots of thumbberry juice. Yeah, Rafiki. It's great, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, does a lot of berry work. A lot of berry they're work. Not even, they're not berries so much as like gourds. I guess. It's some sort of fruit. It's a fruit for sure, but I actually couldn't tell you what is closest to that fruit because it's got like a hard outside. And then a bunch of juice. But it cracks open and it's just straight up liquid Maybe inside. like a coconut. That's probably the closest. But it's like a... Something else. But it's like not a, a coconut. Pink. Yeah. Yeah. Juice. Tweet at us. Yeah. What, uh, what that Rafik? Fruit, rough fruit key. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. I love rough fruit key. All right, good. 
Yeah. <laughs> I liked him a lot. He was maybe my favorite. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> he was great. He drew that little lion on the wall. Yeah. I love that lion illustration. Yeah. That was a nice little There's something moment. something very charming about mm-hmm. it. It was. It's very That's iconic. Great. Yeah. I would wear... Well, I wouldn't because I don't want to buy any new clothes. But right. I think a t-shirt with just that on it would be cool. Would you want Cub Simba or... Redux with the main Simba later when you uh, realize he's alive. If I got oh, it in 1994, that yeah, yeah, you're gonna say it. Go that uh, changes in sunlight. Yes, yeah, or heat. Yeah, yeah, where it adds the main. Oh, pretty sweet. Get I on want it. That 1994 shirt. hypercolor <laughs> Disney tie-in shirts. They might have. You don't know. It was yeah. 94. Oof. Mm-hmm. I hope those are out there. Uh, what else we got? <laughs> <laughs> the hand is due to kind of a Nazi thing. Yeah. Uh, during. Be prepared. It's very yeah. like that was one of those really on the nose parts of just like yeah. guys. Just in case it's not clear, Scar is a fascist. Yeah. yeah, I something I think that's really interesting about this movie compared to like kids movie, like Disney movies that are coming out now, is I think they've really figured out how to make those movies for adults too. Where I don't think Lion King is for adults. Like, there's nothing in there that's really like that's a grown up joke. I mean, there's a couple, but there's not like. Do you know what I mean? I feel like, yeah, I feel like there's not really jokes for the grown-ups, but there are grown-up situations, I feel yeah. like. Sure, yeah. like the... But I, mean, I thought Aladdin was as much for adults as it was for kids, right? Well, at least, like, the Robin Williams references. Yeah, yeah. Robin Williams I guess, being, yeah. Being Robin Williams. I agree with you, Beth, though. I think yeah. kids' movies now uh, appeal more to adults than they did in the 90s. Yeah, I'm just thinking, like, Pixar movies. Like, oh. I like can't wait to go see the next Pixar movie, and I am a full-grown adult. But, yeah. like, Even if it's Cars 3? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't wait to see the next good Pixar movie. Yeah, yeah but like Zootopia or yeah. all about like racial profiling. Right. Or yeah. uh, The Incredibles. Yeah. Yeah. About family. And kind of racial profiling. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> They're all about racial profiling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but yeah. Yeah, but I didn't think that, like The Lion King to me didn't seem like, it seemed like this was for kids. Yeah. yeah I realized, like when we got to the end and I realized like, oh, this is it. Like it did sort of realize like, man, yeah, they really, like as much as they were like, spoon feeding everything there also wasn't that much to feed you know what Mm -hmm. i mean like it was just sort of like oh man we just ran through the whole story arc didn't we like that pretty much covered it yeah it just (laughs) seemed like it there wasn't a lot to it Mm -mm. there wasn't like even like joke wise there weren't that many jokes really like timon and pumbaa are the funniest part of it but like i remember them being so funny as Mm -hmm. a kid and i'm like oh yeah they're pretty funny but they're like they only do like a couple funny things yeah this one I felt like by the end, like, this was the most, of all the ones we've watched, especially, I feel like this was the most, like, it's a musical Disney cartoon. Because a lot of musicals, and Molly, maybe you can speak to this or disagree with me, depending on your experience. Sure. A lot of musicals, like, when you really break it down, you're like, oh, there's, like, barely anything that happened in the last two and a half hours. Most of this was just an excuse to sing songs. Mm -hmm. And the plot is, like, maybe a paragraph paragraph long right and i feel like this one more than like little mermaid or aladdin was very much that where it was just like Mm. there were like three beats and then a bunch of songs to stretch things out and some good animation Mm -hmm. whereas i feel like aladdin and little mermaid it was a little more like let's explore the relationships between all these characters Mm -hmm. and also they sing sometimes yeah that's true there's not a ton of depth Mm -mm. there are some sensual scenes yeah with some nuzzling let's talk about that i found a little uncomfortable all right at the uh, this actually uh, this also I would like to officially open the discussion for one of our beloved segments. <laughs> yeah, did, yeah, they yeah. did they bang? 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 Okay, so let's set the scene. We see Pumbaa's butt. Yes. <laughs> That's most scenes. <laughs> it's most scenes. See Pumbaa's butt. Suddenly, there's another lion. Yeah. She's attacking Pumbaa. It's terrifying. He thinks he's going to die. Adult, boring, Matthew Broderick Simba leaps out. And they start fighting each other. And it's terrifying and violent. But then I think she, like, wins. Yeah. In the exact way she always won when they were kids. And suddenly they realize, or he realizes it's her. They make friends with each other. And then they, like, go off to discuss the political nuances of Pride Rock or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
and then Timon opens up the song, and suddenly it's about romance, and it's nighttime, and they're playfully wrestling, and then it gets oddly sexual, in my opinion. She has, like, very she is, sexual yeah, she eyes She is, like, happening. straight up, like, lying on her back. Yeah. With a look in her eye mm-hmm. that I even, I remember, even heavy, as a child. Heavy eyelids. Heavy eyelids. Even as a child, I was like, ooh, this seems inappropriate for me to be watching this. <laughs> then they nuzzle each other. Yeah. And yeah. then it cuts back to Timon and Pumbaa hiding in the drapery of foliage, basically saying that he's going to fall in love tonight, suggesting that the night is not over, ah. suggesting something may happen for the rest of that evening. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes, they did. I also think they yeah. did. So really? The question yeah. is, did they bang that night in the... The nice After part the, of the song, jungle. yes. After the song, they well, told okay, me that. Okay, that would have been premarital, though, right? Yeah. Because but as they're betrothed, before, and they're animals. Uh, no, no, okay, <laughs> so all right. We're humans. Hey, <laughs> well, I think mean, about it. normally I would side with you, Beth, but I'm just going to point out what? that at the beginning, what? Just because? What does that mean? She's a woman? No, I would normally side just with just because she's your favorite. On the fact that these are is that what you're saying? She's your favorite. Animal marriage. Seems I mean, we stupid. know that though, right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, <laughs> that is also true. The animal marriage seems stupid. Have you ever seen like a little kitten in like a groom's outfit? <laughs> <laughs> a little kitten in a bride. Um, it's adorable. <laughs> okay, I stand corrected yet again. Okay. However. Um, at the very beginning, when Simba and Nala mm-hmm. are little cubs mm-hmm. going to, about to go get into some trouble with the elephant uh, graveyard, yeah. um, he like specifically points out their betrothed and they're going to be married. Right. Yes. Which means this is pre-marital nuzzling. Right. Yes. And I think, I would contend that they are aware of that, mm-hmm. uh, but the entire structure of their society has fallen apart. Mm-hmm. Uh, the savannah this is, is like the Titanic. The savannah is ruined. Fascism is taking over Pride Rock. They don't know if they're going to live to see tomorrow. <laughs> Why not have a one good evening between two young, virile teenage animals? <laughs> it's it's their first date. Yeah. Oh, not really though. They <laughs> They've so known each other for years, for years and years, pining for up. each other, presumably. Also, the dust that comes out from Simba lying down says sex. <laughs> So clearly, no, that's his SFX. <laughs> I also like Molly. I would ordinarily side with the pro bang, <laughs> or side with the person across from me at the table. I don't know how this works, yeah. but I, I, I mean that's actually probably true. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they banged. I what? think Simba is too uh, emotionally immature mm-hmm. and stunted from living in the jungle with a couple. Insect eaters mm-hmm. and just being a child all the time. Sure. Mm-hmm. That he doesn't, he's not picking up on the heavy messaging that Nala is laying down. <laughs> mm-hmm. She wants to bang. <laughs> this is like a big situation. Mm-hmm. Although we landed on they did bang. They absolutely <laughs> bang. <laughs> now I'm yeah. tucking myself into it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying... I'm saying Simba was very naive throughout the whole process. Yeah. Nala was in control the entire okay, time. Okay, then I'm okay. on board. I mean, he starts out that day, like you say, immature, naive... Yeah. Just, and then he, the next day, he goes off and he saves... He becomes a man. He becomes a man, mm. saves Pride Rock. He goes to Zazu, orders his coffee black. <laughs> 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 Call back. Yeah. Oh. All right. Yep, they banged. Boom. <laughs> wow. I'm just going to hold out hope for innocence. Yeah, but we've already established this is the Disney movie with grown-up situations. We see death. We see the murder. We see implied sexual congress. <laughs> the circle of life. The circle, exactly. That's the, I don't know, middle part of the circle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the love polygon. Yeah. I mean, where'd that baby cub come from? Think about yeah. it. <coughs> yeah, certainly you're not saying that they never bang. No, they most certainly do Just that bang, one night in the... But I would think after a... Formal ceremony. What do you marriage. think a lion wedding looks like? Rafiki's probably out there Listen. rubbing gourd juice on everybody. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. No question. There's no question. He yeah. just brings in like a bucket of gourds. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Well, I, still though, I mean, they do something. Zazu gives a very earnest speech. Oh, he gets drunk on berry wine. Yeah. Although, you know, I could talk myself Gordon. out of this just by saying that maybe they mention the marriage thing so we can feel okay about the eventual show. Ah. 
Yeah. You know? Oh, the betrothal? Yeah, yeah the betrothal is like, uh, it's okay, Mom and Dad. They're going to have kids later, but they're definitely getting married. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, nah, I don't buy that. Well, I don't you think don't, it, So are you back to no bang? Oh, no, I just, I don't think they were concerned with people being... Worried about the morality of lions. Are you sure? <laughs> Have you seen the Disney, Disney. fan base? Oh, Having cubs out of wedlock? Yeah. 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 Dude. People worry about that? Um, yes, they worried about the SFX. Like tiny, yeah. tiny detail that we didn't see, but maybe it was. I yeah, think you have to like. It. I don't know. I remember I really in high school going talk. frame by frame and, yeah. and finding it, quote unquote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I didn't see it this time, and it's we didn't pause it, but also they might have edited it. Because of the controversy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Still. No, I think... I think You're saying no bang. You're falling down on no I bang. Mean, I don't no bang. know. I'm going to hold fast on no bang just, okay. to, just to keep it spicy. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I could go either way. I mean, arguably, you're not keeping it spicy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to remove all spice from this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, I, <laughs> speaking of adult Simba, and maybe character design in general, yeah. I was kind of bored by the looks of the lions. Right. Adult Simba has 90s hair curtains. Oh, he totally does. <laughs> oh my god, he totally does. As a mane, and it bugged me the whole time. Yeah. Um, and then all the lionesses are super boring and look the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think Nala is maybe a different shade of That's beige. It. Yeah, different color it. eyes. Yeah. yeah, but they're really, they all look very cookie cutter to me. Mm-hmm. And not uh, a lot of detail. Yeah. Very outline Right? Yeah. Um, I think it's because I don't have the mane to set it off. You I know? guess, yeah. but I I believe that they have skillful enough animators that if they had wanted to invest in making the yeah. female lines interesting, they would have. They probably honestly had to spend so much time on like the backgrounds of this movie yeah. that they're just like, whatever, just draw the same lion over and over. <laughs> We yeah. gotta get this out. We gotta get this out the door. And there's also no, yeah, the lions. There's no children lion except those two. Yeah. Which someone pointed out. And yeah. it's weird, but yeah. So I was distracted by hair curtains and boring. That's true. Lady and I lions. hadn't thought about the lack of other children until Mufasa you see Mufasa. Well, Mufasa ate, <laughs> what, Mufasa Mufasa ate all the other cubs. Did he? Well, here's something that just <laughs> so occurred to me. I know what you're going. Who is Nala's dad? <gasps> yes. Bump. Bum, bum. Yeah, it's probably Mufasa, right? <laughs> yeah. Unless some like drifter came into town. I mean, or Scar. Oh. Oh. Either way, like at best, they're cousins. Mm-hmm. I Yikes. mean, I think. Yikes, Disney! What I are you think... gonna do about that? <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going back to science and the other thing that I liked at that age. Farts. farts. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's nothing to do with farts. Sorry, that's nothing to do with farts. But I think the way lions actually work is like the dudes get older. And they're just like, hey, I'm going to be in charge. And then one of the dudes is like, no, you're not. Get out of here. So maybe what happened is Nala's dad was like, be banging. And yeah. then he's like, I'm a man now. I'm drinking my coffee black. Now I'm the king. <laughs> Mufasa was like, shut up. You're terrible. Get out of here. So now he's just wandering the plane. I mean, that may be how it works with actual lions. But yeah. in the universe of these lions, it's father to son. Right. Mm-hmm. Because it wasn't like someday you'll challenge me and kick me out. <laughs> right. it was Which someday it you totally should have been. The king. That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah. The, there's only one other man. It's Scar. Maybe they had a third brother. Still, then their cousin. Okay, cousins. fine. Maybe they had an adopted brother. <laughs> the best is there's a drifter lion who came in, <laughs> see where the bang was, <laughs> and slunk off in the night. And then Mufasa liked her enough to be like, "All right, you can keep it." I'm Which I would here. for sure watch a movie about a drifter <laughs> lion who I hope wore a leather jacket. <laughs> Hey. What would his mane look like? A be like spiked up, yeah, yes. or slicked all the way back. Oh, yeah. yes. slicked, slicked all the way back. back. That'd be amazing. Yeah, <laughs> and he definitely wears sunglasses for yeah. sure. And he would yeah. surf. <laughs> That's, uh, there's probably a I like lion king Tony four. the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony the tiger hybrid. That means Nala's a liger. Yes. Mm. Oof. Hey. Drama. Yeah. Drama. Drama. Um, Ooh, how about this? Uh, maybe Rafiki just, like, magicked Nala into existence. Sure. He seems like he's probably got some magic. For sure. Like, he can tell Simba is around. Because just, of some leaves? Yeah, and g- more gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> and an old turtle shell. Well, I think it's like uh, the wind blows, right? The yeah, wind but, changes direction, and right. that's what tells him. But he, like, collects the, the wind leaves changing and, like, puts them oh, in a Oh, it's thing. also what, the rain coming. Yeah. 
The wind changing direction. Winds of change. Ah, mm. Blowing in the wind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many miles must Mustafa walk? Mufasa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, one joke for this movie that I remember killed me as a kid <laughs> was uh, when the hyenas are saying Mufasa to each other yeah. and then like shuddering. Yeah. yeah. Say it again. Mufasa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it was so funny as a kid and yeah. we used to say that to each other. Uh, this time. You and your best friends that you know longer have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I chuckled. I still chuckled a little bit. Yeah. But I was like, it's, it's not that good. But as a kid, I was like, it killed me. Yeah. That one. Uh-huh. Yeah. I remember the hyenas being a lot funnier as a child, which I guess makes sense because they are very childish. Yeah. Like, they're just goofy. And, like, oh. the third one is literally just Jim Cummings, beloved voice actor, doing one of his, like, kooky background characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I related way too much to the authority figures in this show. Scar? To really have a good time. No, not Scar. <laughs> um, no, what's the bird's name? Zazu. Zazu. Mr. Bean. Is that Mr. Bean? It is Mr. Bean. Oh, he was just so stressed out. And he, he was. Tried to he do had a thing. rough job. Yeah. And just was underappreciated. And so I had trouble enjoying the mischief because I was like, can you be nicer to that bird? Right? Like, he had so much on his plate. He was, he was like, the king's personal attendant, Mm -hmm. but then also apparently, like, was responsible for keeping the prince alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, he had to, like, keep an eye out on him, too. But also, it was like, I mean, he's literally, like, Mufasa's personal assistant. He was Mm -hmm. just like, hey, here's the itinerary for today. And then he gets pounced on. For no reason? Here's what I think. Okay. I think we didn't see this backstory, but I think (sighs) Zazu is just, he's so uptight, you know? He's got to loosen up. (laughs) So Mufasa's like, you know, it'd be really fun. What if you pounced on him? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this just to play games with my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Are they friends? Yeah, they're friends. I I feel like there's too much of an inherent uh, status and power differential to play that way and get away with it. Yeah. He's being bullied. Yeah. Yeah. In my opinion. Wow. Workplace violence. He also seems very much like a Sebastian character. Yeah, very much. Which, if we then keep drawing parallels (gasps) to old theories, him and Mufasa are lovers. (laughs) (laughs) And he's also as Nala's dad. Oh! Oh. (laughs) Weird. (laughs) Wow. Uh, Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's, a no, it's a parallel one. Um, but the lizard in this movie is maybe the MVP for oh. me. Wait, the one that lizard? he's growling at? Yeah. Oh, yeah. me too. I love that thing. He just like, doesn't give a fuck. Doesn't give a shit. <laughs> and then I was thinking, while I was thinking that, I was like, this lizard's the MVP. I was thinking about how there aren't, we're not going to find the kind of MVPs that we usually latch on to. Yeah. Um, in animated movies yeah. because things are more intentional. And right. For me, at least, the people I really like are like the extras that just like do something weird in the yeah. background <laughs> yeah. and no one really had control over it. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in this, it's like every character is thought out and yes. it's like yeah. intentional. Right. And you're not going to see just some like dude in like short shorts <laughs> and a jacket walking into <laughs> some place and you're like, this yeah. guy's crushing it. Just, yeah. So I guess in this case, the MVP would be like the team that drew the lizard. Yeah, I right? guess. Whoever's idea was like, let's have this w- lizard just like because I mean, yeah. Because think of it this way: like the director of the movie was like, okay, so there has to be a little animal, and Simba's going to try to roar at it, and he's going to be really bad at it. Animal doesn't give a shit, yeah. and that's their job. Their job is like draw an animal that doesn't give a shit, yeah. and they crushed it. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. That lizard was great. My MVP would be the wildebeest that like falls on its face. Cause that, oh yeah, that poor wildebeest had to fall on its face. Yeah, for sure. Right. It took just a to fall. like prove a point. That things like, are Ooh, chaotic. This is scary. Yeah. yeah, anything can happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. danger, danger. That, uh, that's a good example, though, of like that whole sequence had some really cool shots yeah. for a child's children's cartoon. Yeah, like they like really tried with that whole sequence. Like they had a lot of crazy zooms. Yep. And like forced perspectives. Yep. And, yeah. Stampedes are scary. Yes. I every time I see a stampede, I think how scary it is. Right, and I've never. How been... many times have you seen? <laughs> I, I feel like they happen in movies with like, some yeah. Jurassic crazy. Park and this one and and City Slickers. City Slickers. Oh my god! Uh, another movie, Jumanji. Have Jumanji. Yeah. 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 Mm. That's slow All rhino. Yep. Oh, slow, slow rhino. rhino. Oh. Mm-hmm. Love slow rhino. Slow yeah, uh, I've never been in a stampede or oh. anything like it. Terrifying. But yeah, the idea of them is very scary. <laughs> It's yeah. kind of like an avalanche, but with animals. I think it's like I oh. think it's terrifying because it's yeah, it's like an avalanche or a tidal wave, but there's that extra element of like 
this is an organism that can perceive its surroundings. Yeah. So, like, on some level, you could theoretically stop it. Yeah. But it's impossible. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, like, it's fear that created it. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's transferring its fear. The it's, dest- like, it's a yeah. metaphor for the destructive power of fear oh. in the group wow. mind. Yes. That's deep. Yeah. Wow. Well, that makes me think it's something terrible. Um, the Vasodine? Kind of. Well, it's like that whole idea of getting stuck in a stampede kind of situation. Um, we used to go to this thing called uh, Light Up Atlanta. Okay. Uh, where, I don't remember the point. I think they just all turned the off on? all the lights on. Uh-huh. I think it was it. I don't remember. <laughs> Burned fossil fuels and well, had a great time. There's something more about it. But anyway, that's what they called it. it must be It was like a pretty hot. festival. All the lights on. Shut up. Yeah, no, like, it's, like it's a hot stop. Atlanta. Stop. Oh, uh, stop. Nobody hot. calls it that. Hot. Hot Atlanta. Hot, hot Atlanta. Atlanta. No one. Hot no one. Hot light up Atlanta. Oh, there you go. Hot light up. Okay, got it. No one calls it that. No light one ever Atlanta. calls it that since the 70s. Don't call it that. At light up. Oh, Time. my gosh. Okay, anyway. anyway. <laughs> um, we, were, we were in the subway, and there's one of the subway stations has, like, one of the tallest escalators in the world. Oh. It's, um, mm. They had to... Must be nice. And, well, <laughs> well <laughs> they had to... It's a Peachtree Center station, and they had to bury it way down because there's a bunch of granite. Oh, I thought it was because they had to get to the top of the peach tree. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway... <laughs> Um, <laughs> Molly is done for the night. <laughs> <laughs> the escalator had broken oh, no. under the weight of all of these people. It was like thousands <gasps> upon thousands of people. But you couldn't not walk up, right? Like yeah. at a certain point, it was almost like your feet didn't matter. Because the Because the crush crowd. of the crowd yeah. was, was just kind of pushing along. And I remember being kind of okay with it, even though I was, I was pretty young. I was probably like 10 or something. Yeah. We're doing okay until we get to the top, and you could see that organically, somehow, people were able to compress themselves so that they went around something that was at the very top of the stairs, Uh-oh. which shouldn't happen, right, because we were all packed so tight, yeah. and then you couldn't figure out what it was going to be until right when you got up on it, and sure enough, eventually we got right up on it. And then we compressed and went around to the edge because there was a man who had a heart attack and was lying on the ground and being attended to by medical attendants. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But I remember as as a kid, I mean, that that was, like, my first introduction to, like, oh, crowds aren't as fun as I thought. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, they can be real terrifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Soccer riots. Soccer riots. Yeah. Oh, I was in one of those. What? Yes. I was in Argentina. (laughs) This is an amazing <laughs> tale. This is just a night of stories. Well, uh, um, so I was in Argentina on a business trip, no big and deal. our colleague who was from Argentina took us to um, a River Plate game, okay, um, which is a big soccer football foot football. Uh, and so we went down to the stadium, and he gave us pretty clear instruction. He's like, just stick with me. Yeah. Everything's going to be fine. It's not a big rivalry tonight, but people take soccer pretty seriously, or football pretty seriously. So don't, basically don't be idiots and wander off. Yeah. And so we were having a lovely time, and we were basically in the concourse, you know, the area mm. with all the vend- vendors. And um, uh, and we were, like, looking at T-shirts, and there was just a row full of stores, right? And we're standing there thinking about T-shirts. And then we hear, like, a rumble from the other end of the concourse coming towards us. And in the time it took us to look up from the T-shirts and look at our shoulder at what was coming at us, the shops had all already closed their metal <laughs> oh, gates. Oh, no. <laughs> and so we were, on the other, we, were between, we were on the other side of the metal gates. Like, we were stuck in the concourse, and, like, everything had closed immediately. And all the Argentinians knew to just get the hell out of Dodge. Mm-hmm. So it's just the Americans standing in a row with our backs to the metal grate. And we see this fight happening, and it's just like this tornado, which is actually like it was when I was in middle and high school. Like a fight is like the swirling dervish that kind of swirls down, and it was this dude in a white t-shirt, and he had blood coming out of his face, and it was all over his white t-shirt. And at a certain point, like he came around, and you know how you just sort of hope like a tornado doesn't hit your house? Yeah, yeah. We were just kind of standing there with our backs pressed against this metal door. Did you uh, door. take off your belt? 
and just loop it around a pipe <laughs> to keep you safe. Man, if I had only seen Twister yeah. more recently, I'm sure I would have thought of that. Um, but we just pressed our backs, and he missed us by, like, a couple of feet. Blood shirt? So blood shirt slams against the the metal, uh, you know, barriers, yeah. and is being chased by all these Argentina plate fans. And then he spins out and takes off, and they kept following him. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. And then did your Argentinian friend come up to you and tell you it was all your fault, and you had to leave Argentina <laughs> and never come back? <laughs> no. What happened was all the metal grates zipped right up, <laughs> open for business. Did you want that shirt? <laughs> Argentinians come out of everywhere, and everything returned to normal wow, in like that's two amazing. seconds. Wow. That's, that's amazing. amazing. Yeah. So be huh. careful. Yeah. Stamp human stampedes. Yes. yes. Crowds. Yeah. Terrifying. Are those scenes in movies where people get trampled to death? Oof. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Rough. Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Simba's mom <laughs> was not a mom cubine. No. no. She was still very proud. Yeah. So good on her and them. Didn't I write that down? Mom sass? Mom sass. Yeah. She had a little bit of sass. I mean, she was like sassy. pragmatism, I guess. Yeah. I mean, she was like... Pragmasass. Yeah. Pragmasass. Yeah. yeah. She was like, hey, we can't do our job because you messed everything up. Yeah. And so, and then he smacks her. Yeah. Back Because he doesn't respect the balance. Yes. The circle. Mm-hmm. The circle of life. I... Do wonder how allowing the hyenas not to just live in bone graveyards yes. destroyed the entire ecosystem? Yeah. Because they ate all the food? I guess they just and ate And drank everything. all the water? Well, I think there was a drought in addition. So there was a little bit of bad timing? Yeah. There was a little bit of bad timing, but I think the hyenas, um, yeah, upset the balance because um, they're not supposed to live there. Not and it scared to. away all the other wildlife. Oh, right. As we saw, they were very good at scaring away herds. Mm-hmm. So they're meant to just to stay in their little holes yeah. and never come out. And well, to come out after an animal's dead. They're scavengers. Scavenge it. So they had risen above their station. Yes, exactly. Oh, why do you always trap No, no, no. no. Let's horrifying. do this. Yeah. <laughs> and were trying to be like the lion. Yes, they and, were trying to live a life of privilege, yeah. as had been established by the hierarchy of Pride Rock. And so once the bottom feeders rise up... Mm-hmm. It's bad for civilization. Yes. All of civilization collapses. Well, okay, It'll but dry up all use, the riverbeds. You uh-huh. use the word bottom feeder. <laughs> so yeah. what if it were a bottom feeder and all of a sudden it came up from the bottom of the ocean and terrifying. started eating other fish? Then those fish would be eaten and then some other fi- fish wouldn't have their food. Yeah. So, so they should have stayed in their place. Yes. Yes. Where they belong. The hyenas, played by an African-American woman... And a Latino man should have stayed in their place. And then characterized as someone with a mental disability. While wonderful (laughs) Euro-Anglo-centric lions stayed in their beautiful ivory rock tower. Yeah. It's probably more like a... I mean, it's not ivory. It's because that would be... Well, that would be That would be very disturbing. (laughs) (laughs) Those lions would not be trumpeting for the return of the Thunder King. Uh, yeah, I found it a little weird. Maybe they're like, and they multiply like rabbits unchecked. I mean, there's, there's definitely is a balance to an ecosystem. Yeah. That's a real thing. I was just, I was struggling to see how like, yeah, it happens hey, just we so can see the hyenas now right. all the herds move on. Right. But I think it was also like the hyenas were expecting to be taken care of. Yeah. And yeah. multiply a lot. Instead of scavenging. Mm-hmm. Right. I was Maybe also they weren't scavenged anymore, so then there was more rotting carcasses, mm. and then disease spread. And as we learned from the Be Prepared song, eventually enough rotting carcasses causes volcanic activity under the oh. Earth's crust. <laughs> yeah, we should talk about where the hyenas live <laughs> and where that is in the savanna of like a Yellowstone Mordor type. Yeah. We are going to be so embarrassed when it turns out that we look at an atlas. There might be. That'd be great. Maybe there's a bunch of hot springs and... What is lava? Uh, okay. If there are, are they green? Yeah. No. That's like, problematic. There's just like bubbling green. But you love like Technicolor King song. Wouldn't you... Couldn't oh, it be no, argued thought, that I, the green was like... Visually, it's amazing. But couldn't you argue that that was like a aesthetic choice and it's not actually green? I, I could argue that any part of it was aesthetic <laughs> because it was drawn by people. Okay. By artists. I don't... But I don't think... <laughs> Uh, to your point, it 
I don't think they sent the message that this was different from reality, the yeah. reality of the movie. I think... Yeah, it wasn't like, oh, cut to Technicolor. Yeah. yeah. It was like, ooh, acid bats. Yeah, or whatever. It was, oh, like, it was uh, like Batman. It was like Batman. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's how you know something's laughing. evil. It's bubbling and green. That's I true. feel like we should have had a segment called, Is There an Acid Vat? And if we did, this one would pass. Probably mm-hmm. the first one to pass, right? Since Batman. Since Batman. <laughs> We've hoped for one. Wait, was there one in the Batman we watched? Yes. Was there or were we just hoping bat. there would be? No, there was because of Two Face. That's how Two Face was. That was like a little, little vial of acid. <clears throat> oh. Oh, isn't he like in a safe with boiling acid? Ooh, maybe. I thought. <laughs> We'd have to go watch it again. I thought it was like. Check the tapes. When they go back to the. They're like in that weird glow. Glow town. You know yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are there just like buckets of green liquid in Maybe. It? I'd buy that. Mm-hmm. Tweet at us. Oh, uh, we probably already had this discussion. Hashtag, <laughs> we listened to that episode, dummies. Yeah. yeah. Go back. Hey, start over. Yeah, go back start to the beginning. Start episode one. The Circle of Life. Circle of Life. Circle of Podcast. The Circle of Podcast. Which makes this the last episode. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, that's, oh, no, that's so sad. Yeah, it no, is sad. It's the circle of life. Is it because I was coughing earlier? I'm really sorry. No, I was it's fine. Oh, it's yeah, you infected the microphone. Oh, no. Oh, no. What if we all get death? Uh, okay. <laughs> you, what, your mention of, like, hyenas being introduced into the thing and destroying the thing made, reminded me of something that I noticed, where I was like, I was never clear how many hyenas there were supposed to be. Yeah. Like, sometimes it seemed like there were, like, thousands of them, and then other times it was, like, the three main ones and maybe, like, two of their silent friends. I think there are thousands of okay. them. Mm-hmm. But there were only like four lions then. No, there were There's like, a bunch of lionesses. They showed yeah, up. Yeah, but like, they were like, at around. most like ten. Yeah. Yeah. Ten lions is going to take out like a 2,000 hyenas? Yes. Yeah. Really? Well, I think they ran away. Scare them off. I guess they did. hyenas sh- look notoriously Plus, scared. I bet a bunch of them left on their own because they were like, this, this town sucks. is terrible. Yeah, that's true. It's all just bones. And move to yeah. a better neighborhood. Yeah. 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 Like that great, beautiful place Timon and Pumbaa lived. Like, no, yeah. That's where I thought they were going to move. Yeah. It's like, hey guys, we've got a better spot. Leave the hyenas here. Yeah. But yeah. then I'm sure there would be some bug kingdom that was just like, you're encroaching on our land. And oh, then it man. became this whole terrifying okay. metaphor. There is just no way that Simba could survive on a bunch of grubs. Like, he would be so anemic. He had to have been eating other things <laughs> on the side, right? He was sneaking, like, some yeah. antelope. Ooh, do you think he was sneaking, like, other warthogs? Ooh, <sighs> dark. Ooh. And Although I guess they imply there aren't any other warthogs or something, because they, like, are outcasts. <laughs> yeah, they're I outcasts because... Well... There aren't any other warthogs in that either. Yeah. He's just like a warthog, and then all the other animals are like, you smell. Yeah. You smell. And then it's not clear why Timon. Is he just yeah. annoying? Or people are just like, get out of here. I hate you. Yeah. They too mouthy? Is. I think he's too mouthy. Do you think? They probably flesh it out in one of the <laughs> many, <video>. many spin offs. <laughs> yeah. Tweet us. Hashtag, what would that Timon secret? Ooh. Why is he up there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something darker, I hope. I bet it's. I bet like, he killed somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Espionage. Yeah. Oh, he sold out the meerkats to the oh. groundhogs. Oh, that would be so sad. Oh, the groundhogs were like spies in this. That was fun. They oh, that was fun. another MVP. That yeah. was great. Although, it was a groundhog. Was right? it a groundhog? It was kind a of. something which Fairy shouldn't dog? exist there. I don't know. Underground something. mammal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tweet at us what that Africa dig mammal. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a very. It was, was a, a rough reporting. One. From the underground. From the underground. Yeah. That's nice. From the underground. What? He was like a Star Wars character. It was awesome. There's a report from the underground. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> oh, they needed Admiral Akbar. They should have had a squid man. Because <laughs> then he would have like gotten the news from Scar, like, yeah. hey... Simba's down in this thing, and you yeah. gotta go save him. Oh, and then he'd swoop, <laughs> swoop in on his floaty <laughs> chair. like, it's a trap. Rock, rock, rock. Mm-hmm. And then Mufasa would be like, hey, get out of here. And then he'd fall into that lava in the elephant's graveyard, and Scar would cut off two of his limbs. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then I guess, I don't know, Zazu would turn out to be an evil wizard who would then put Mufasa in a robot suit. Oh, this is complicated. It's a James Earl Jones reference. Oh. God. I didn't get it. Now there. you've turned over the table. <laughs> you have to pause and pick it up. Pause. I had guessed Oof. that Nala would... Oh, <laughs> you get two paw high fives for that. I hated that. You're welcome. <laughs> I guess Nala would shame flirt yeah. Simba into into moving back. Yeah. 
Not really. Not really. It was more like straight talk. More, no, she gave some straight talk, but yeah. it was the um, the but wise it was Rafiki and Rafiki yeah. who did the convincing. A man had to hear it from yeah, me. Yeah, a man told him the exact same had to thing. Knock basically, sense into him. Yeah. literally. Yeah. Oh, they made that joke in the movie. Yeah, yeah I just remember that. They spelled it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got all the songs. Ooh. Can you feel the love? Circle of Check. life. Can't Check. wait to be king. Check. Check. Hakuna Matata. Check. Check. Be prepared. Check. Check. That's it? That's what we said. I think we're, we, I yeah, I think we got all of them. There were like little songs, like they sang um, The Lion Sleeps Tonight yeah. Yeah. at mm-hmm. one point. Right. But it's Does, I don't know if that counts. Not, it's not a Lion King yeah. song as much as song that's also in there. All along with A Lovely Bunch of Coconuts. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which we also bet on. And... Nobody, Nobody knows. knows. And it's a small oh. world. Yep. Uh I legit laughed this time at Timon and Puma's distraction song, mm-hmm. uh, where they're trying to tempt the hyenas yes. with eating Pumbaa. Yeah. They talk yeah. about being a big pig. I realized. You can be a big pig, too. I realized <laughs> in watching that scene as an adult yeah. that I like never actually processed the lyrics that Timon was singing and that the song was about eating the pig. Yeah. I just sort yeah. of thought he was just making a silly hula song and that to Pumbu, that was like his contribution, was to be edible. <laughs> like I never actually gathered that the song was actually about eating him. Yeah. Yeah. So before we get to how we felt about it, we like to do on this show when we are able, um, reading a five-star review on iTunes or some other service, if you tell us about it, we don't check anywhere, but iTunes, uh, of this podcast in the impression of someone from the movie. And we do have a new review. Yay! Yay! Thanks, a listener. Ooh. Just one, so we'll see what happens next month. (laughs) Um... (laughs) <laughs> is anybody particularly inspired by anybody in this movie? I um, prefer a Nick Cage. <laughs> or we could go classic Nick Cage. That's always the default. Right. I would... Ugh. I try to do Pumbaa, but I don't know if I could actually physically do it. it sounds like you should try. Sounds like a good challenge. Oh, mm-hmm. boy. Oh, which one is it? Second from the bottom. Second from the bottom. Yeah. Who's our awesome listener? Colt. Colt. Spelled C-O-H-L-T. Ooh. 45. Works every time. Uh. Billy D. Williams. Look it up. Uh, okay. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it says. going to be... Uh, mm. <laughs> Their best impression. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hard. <laughs> it's toy. Oh, nope. nope. <laughs> Just lead into it. Lead into it. <laughs> uh, somebody say, "Pig." Oh, I don't even know. I love that every time someone makes a good pun, the whole crew suddenly turns into the little green. Now I sound like a <laughs> from Akbar. The little green aliens from Toy Story. Great pun. Lots of laughs. <laughs> Keep up the excellent work. Yay! Yay. You're charging cool. their primary weapon. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Colt 45. Colt 45. But as we established, Admiral Akbar is a member of the cast in our dreams. <laughs> yeah. so. We got a double review. Oh, that was great. Thank you so much. Great. Um, Dan, you gave it a hopeful three, but we're worried you're going to be too much of a college chase. <laughs> <laughs> be real cynical about yeah. it. Uh, I guess I will bump it up to a three. No. Uh, I Good thought... Job. You were at Start a three. Started a three. I was? Yeah. Oh, shit. You're bumping it sideways to stay at a three? <laughs> <laughs> you're a hopeful three. Okay. So maybe now you're a, a confident, confident three. three. Oh, yes, there we go. I'm now a confident three. Uh, I very much enjoyed the animation, as I discussed, particularly the Pumbaa character design and movements. Uh, I thought there were some decent jokes. Uh, good performances. Uh, script was a little thin. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah, I'd say it was a acceptable Disney movie from the 90s. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's... Beth, you, you gave it a four <laughs> and thought you would have nice music and nostalgia. Yeah. Oh. I think that's true. I think, uh, like we were talking about earlier, um... That it wasn't, it's not as much for adults as that as I was hoping it would be. So I'm going to drop it down to a three. Ooh. What? But I still really liked it and thought the music was fun. Um, I think I just like have now seen 
more kids movies that are like for everyone. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like compared to other ones, it's not as high up there as I would have remembered. Wow. Would you say this is not a romp? <clears throat> oh, I thought it was a romp. Okay. It just it's didn't just have like, everything. I'm just thinking like Wally. Yeah. Like I could watch that movie a billion times. Sure. Although counterpoint, some adults hated that movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because Which it's I a real under- bummer? Nah, I just don't in ge- why. just in general. Oh. Some of them probably because of the bummerness, but other mm-hmm. people I think were just like, ugh, we get it, robots. I mm-hmm. love robots, though, so sure. I like robots more than lions. Maybe that was Ooh. Robo. Oh, reimagine Lion King. Robot King. Ooh. Ooh. Wally King. I would watch that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I also gave it a four. I thought it would have something for everyone and be a romp. Um, I think I'm going to drop it to a three. Whoa. Oh, I yeah. liked it, but it, it sort of just felt like... It executed the Disney movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, like, there was nothing that I really latched onto. It was like, oh, I really like this. Whereas, like, Aladdin, uh, I really like the songs in there. I like Aladdin's character. Little Mermaid, Ursula is da bomb. Mm-hmm. And, like, nothing really jumped out. It just it felt kind of like a... Real even? Yeah. yeah. Just like, hey, mm-hmm. we did this Disney movie, and it's good, but there's nothing to write home about. Yep. Um, so, yeah, three. Yeah, it makes me wonder if they finished the movie and then we're like, you know what we need? Elton John. <laughs> just gonna Spice it bring, up a little. Just gonna Spice bring it, it over us. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Molly, you gave it a grumpy two. <laughs> well, and I think part of part of the reason I want to change my score is I feel so bad that Beth, who had such great feelings for this movie, walked away feeling not as good about it. It makes me feel bad about being such a grumpy Gus to begin with. Um, but that is genuine to my experience of watching it. And I think watching it now, I feel uh, less just generally cynical. <laughs> um, less angry about Elton John. I'm sorry, Elton John. I don't know why, but I really <laughs> had a problem with you in the past. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll give it a, a solid three. Right. Maybe even a three and a half. Oh, oh. what? Quite the jump. Well, I mean, the animation was spectacular. Um... It was just truly excellent. And I think, I mean, probably every time I see a film, no matter how how wonderful it is or how terrible it is, so many people work so hard to make it happen. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, and so to, to coordinate that many people and have something so generally magical um, with, like, reflective water and all that stuff is very cool. Um, also, I we literally did step out of the room during the <laughs> horrifying killing scene. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, so it certainly affected me. I can't say that this movie didn't. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you could not pay me. Actually, maybe you could. If you wanted to pay $150, I would watch <laughs> that scene. Oh. Um, but uh, that's it. Yeah. It would just be the one time. Uh, to entice anyone who was willing to pay that much, uh, from the other room, Molly <laughs> well, would start. I'll, I'll be, I can be the, the TV. Okay. So I'm Simba. And I'm Molly, like, on the other side of the house. Okay. <laughs> Dad? Oh. Dad? Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, wake up. No, no. Is it over yet? <laughs> <laughs> and so on. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, if you pay uh, $149, you can just have that experience from in the other room. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, we'll record that part. Uh, anyway, yeah, three and a half. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wait, did you end up giving it the highest rating of all of I us? I did. I think you did. Huh. Mm-hmm. Seems like the wins... Are changing. Oh, oh. gross. Can like things have changed can. for you. Yes. Ew. It seems like you faced your past yeah. head on. And now your opinion has changed. You guys aren't lying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Totes Recall is hosted by Molly Chase, Beth Gibbs, Dan Jaquette, and Dan Linden. Produced by Beth Gibbs. New episodes of Totes Recall drop on the 15th of every month. For more information and bonus content, visit us at totesrecall.com. Thank you so much for listening.